tarde a todos. É, meu português é limitado e é, os amigos de Nick BR tiram para mim um manual de criptografia em português. Então, assim, tentei estudar, mas, na realidade, é, não foi exitoso. Então, se vou a falar em inglês, pido licença para vocês na apresentação, mas eu compreendo bastante em português também. Okay? Um, so, thank you. We're uh, very happy to be here in the presentation. I am the uh, director in, at Latin America for Cloudflare, and uh, it's the first time that we have been here at this event in Brazil. And one of the main reasons is because you guys always had the dates during a holiday in United States. The, the dates were usually in the Thanksgiving and Black Friday, which are holidays, so it made it very difficult for people to come from the US. So it's better that you have it in these dates. Uh, some of the outline. Um, this part is more background. I will go uh, a little faster in some slides, but I will explain very briefly what Cloudflare does. We are a global CDN that operates under the concept of reverse proxy, and um, we use Anycast routing protocols in our network. We have a global network in 32 countries, 69 different data centers, and uh, since last year, we have been present here in Brazil at uh, PTT um, Sao Paulo, and we are currently looking at uh, other possibilities for expansion for other sites in Brazil. So I was very interested in hearing the previous presentation on OpenCDN. One of the things that we do is we do SSL termination uh, for some of the services that we offer, which are DDoS protection and protection against uh, cyber threats, and layer seven uh, web application firewall, we need to terminate SSL connections. And we um, have a large number of certificates. We, uh, over a year ago, we introduced a new service called Universal SSL, where we offered uh, free SSL to all of our subscribers for the lower tiers. They were based on um, SNI certificates, which are using shared IPs. For a certain higher tier of customers, we were using uh, SAN, SAN, or dedicated certificates. We have over 2 million websites that are using Cloudflare, so obviously this is a topic that's very important for us. The main topic that I will talk about is the deprecation of SHA-1 and new protocols and some of the migration. Uh, there's been a lot of news related to cryptography uh, recently in the past couple of years. Um, things related to deprecation of SSL3, there was recently an IETF RFC on that. There have been many vulnerabilities, Poodle, Freak. Uh, this guy that's in the picture there, uh, Bruce Schneier, he was actually in Brazil not too long ago. Um, <clears throat> he, 10 years ago, 2005, he actually started writing uh, literature talking about the weaknesses in the SHA-1 hashing algorithms. And uh, it's been until much recently where people started paying attention to what he was saying. And I, I will go a little bit more detail. So what is all of this? So this is. This will be basic for people that are working with this more closely, but uh, I will go into some explanation of you know, what, what, what is SHA-1, what are these certificates. So basically, the certificates are using a standard format, which is called X509, and the signing algorithms that are used are these hashing algorithms. The prior generation was MD5, this current one is SHA-1. The newer generations are 
SHA-256, and there's recently standardized SHA-3. So basically, it's a mathematical function, one-way function, that is used to uh, apply to the certificate information. Basically, when you do a hash, you take an existing function, which is this content of the X509, you hash it and you get a, a certain value. And this is what a browser would use to verify that uh, one certificate versus a different certificate. What the real danger with the SHA-1 is what is called a collision, which basically is in cryptography and mathematics, is when two input values can generate the same output value. And basically, this is the real danger in uh, these type of attacks that somebody could find a collision in SHA-1 and be able to uh, impersonate or create a fake certificate for PayPal or for somebody else. This is still an area where there is not uh, attacks in the wild that have been proven, but the technical community uh, in the cryptography and math have already proven that the certificates are weak. Uh, these are some of the numbers that Bruce Schneier put out where they were estimating the cost of what it would take to create one of these SHA-1 collisions. And over time, obviously, the number's decreasing. The, you know, what these guys are writing about is that even a 2012 estimate of $2.7 million or $3 million were within the reach of a malicious state actor or somebody like that or a intelligence agency, for example. And there was a very recent article that was citing uh, much lower values, values in the you know, $70,000 to $100,000 for some computing power to create a precursion to some of these uh, collisions. So basically the answer from the technical community is to have an improved hash function, which is the SHA-2 or SHA-256 which are 256 bit values. And they're larger numbers and they're basically impossible to break. Timeline of some of these events, um, going back to uh, the SHA-1 is almost 20 years old. And again, a, a Bruce Schneier published an article and it's incredible, I was looking at that, that it was 10 years ago, 2005, where he first uh, published some critique about this. Um, so things are going to change coming in January 1st. So the browsers are starting to give warnings already. Uh, Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. And starting next year in 2016, um, they will start completely blocking. Some of these dates are actually fluid. There are conversations still going on. This is happening in um, something called the CAB Forum, the Certificate Authority and Browser Forum, is where a lot of these discussions are, are happening. But essentially, all browsers are going to start giving warnings in 2000 in certificates issued after December 31st, 2015, which is very soon. And um, Certificate authorities will not be able to issue new certificates using SHA-1 algorithm. And at some point, browsers are going to start blocking connections and not allowing connections to SHA-1. Some point in 2016 or uh, early 2017. There is a proposal to still allow a limited use of SHA-1 certificates in the future that is called uh, Legacy Verified and that Cloudflare is uh, working on that as well, uh, along with some other people. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit why. So this is a study from uh, Netcraft, where last October they were showing a, the changeover in number of 
live SHA-2 signature certificate and SHA-1 certificate. And they were showing as of October that there were still over a million certificates that were in utilization in, in major uh, internet properties that were still using SHA-1. That's the last date that they have, but obviously that trend will continue. So again, the, what's going to happen in January varies a little bit by different browser and the dates that each browser are setting are, are different, but even today already, um, Chrome already for, uh, if you have certificates that have longer expiration, it will not show a green sign anymore. Even if you have an HTTPS connection, it will show, um, just it won't show any, any different color like, like it's shown there. Uh, and they will start giving you a red X if you have a browser if you have a certificate, a SHA-1 certificate that expires after 2016 or like 2017, they will show a red X today. So we did some research on um, some sites in Brazil and looking also at the financial sector. And I'm going to share some of that with you guys. Uh, there was recently articles. Um, there was an article citing a study from uh, Unicamp uh, that they looked at the security of a lot of e-banking applications and apps, and they were showing that there was weak security in um, the uh, cryptography and certificate. Brazil is not the only place, so I'm not, you know, I'm not picking uh, uh, against the things that are happening in Brazil. I think this is happening everywhere. Um, looked at a government website, and this is the government for uh, Departamento de Seguranza from the Presidency. So the President of Brazil Security Department. And there is this test that you can do from Qualys, SSL Labs, and it basically shows you, it checks the security of your SSL, of your certificates. You have to, you know, this is not necessarily a crime. You're still using valid standards, but they're just trying to tell you that you're using old standards, right? So it's still, uh, they're, they're, they're using things that, that have been uh, deprecated and are considered ancient. If you see there, um, the browser is giving you a red X. That was, that was Chrome. So it's telling you that, that that's not a very good security. Um, not to pick so much just on, on the Brazil government, but I looked at the government of Argentina, those neighbors, and also aside from their presidency, and also the same thing. Uh, you had a red X and SSL Labs complains about uh, different things. So we took upon ourselves to do a scan of broader. So there is a... There's a list that Amazon publishes, which is called the Alexa 1 million. And it's basically the 1 million most popular sites on the internet. And a, we don't know, I don't know really the methodology that they use, but it's, they, uh, they make that list available for download. So it's an easy place to do some research, just to download the list. So we took that list and we found that there were 18,000 .br domains on that list. And we scanned and looked at, you know, how many had any security, any SSL, uh, what percentage had SHA-1 only, what percentage had SHA-2 only, and what percentage were implementing a certain amount of fallback. So we saw that, you know, 54% had um, some SSL configured or TLS is the proper term. 46% um, had no uh, cryptography configured by default on the main website. And we're seeing that, you know, 41% had already, were already using SHA-2 certificates. Of these 208 um, that had both, and that's what I'm going to talk about a little more, um, 
a big percentage of those, like 90% of those were using, were customers that were using Cloudflare. So they're using a technology that we developed that I'm gonna talk about a little bit more. The other uh, remaining ones were using other providers that even though they had a SHA-1 certificate available as a fallback, it was not configured correctly and it, it wouldn't work. So, um, so that, those are the percentages. And then we looked at, well, what about the financial sector? Let's do a little bit more research on the financial sector and see how the banks are doing. Um, are these percentages gonna be different for the banks? And we actually found that the percentages were not that different and it was a bit surprising to find that even, you know, 43% of the financial sector, we downloaded a list available from uh, Febraban that lists the websites of 114 official banks that are registered in the country. It was a little bit surprising that, that so many of them did not have SSL as a default. I will say that we were only testing the, the main website, you know, um, dub, dub, dub. So there could be other subdomains or host names that they're using for e-banking that, that probably do have SSL. But, but still, um, we should expect that the, the banks would have, at least in their default pages, would all have SSL. So we see that 43%, um, it's 46% from a more general list of 18,000 domains, so the percentages were, were similar. And again, um, a number of these are, have a, already uh, implemented SHA-2, 38%, but still 15 of these 13% are still using SHA-1. And I wonder if they're aware of what's happening January 1st and what's gonna happen with the browsers. I don't know. This is the, then I, well, then I looked at, I looked at, well, let's try to find the domain for the actual e-banking application that the bank has. So I went to one of the banks, well, by the way, one of the largest banks in Brazil, and found their e-banking uh, domain and scanned that and again, they also had a, a pretty bad score in this SSL Labs test. Uh, I hid the name, I don't wanna get in trouble, I wanna make sure I can, I can uh, leave the country and not have any threats, but uh, you guys can probably figure out pretty quickly, pretty easily who, who, who it is. Um, and again, you know, I'm sure they have a lot of other security mechanisms, and they have tokens, and they have anti-fraud, and they have all of that, but, why not have you know, good practices and good hygiene in cryptography and, and, and SSL, right? So I, I do talks like this in, in a lot of different places and people you know, sometimes are surprised. Other times they ask me, but you know, why are the banks not more aware of this, more proactive in, in doing this? So you know, some of the challenges that people have is you know, the biggest challenge I would, th I would say that, that I've seen is uh, outdated infrastructure. So a lot of these cryptography libraries are tied to the operating system. So if they have a Windows 2003 server with an old version of IIS uh, that they've been running for a long time, maybe, you know, 10 years, they don't want to touch it. And it's just there and it works. But if you look in, you know, in regular IT environments, the lifetime use of, of equipment and systems is three to five years. When you're talking about security, hardware and software, the, the time of use is much shorter. It's you know, 18 months sometimes for, for security equipment, right? Uh, things change, so you have to stay on top of that and, and, and change. Um, Sometimes there is intermediate equipment that's doing SSL termination, a proxy server, a, a uh, balancer, so it may be complicated to make changes in those, to um, update the standards, to increase the, um, the encryption levels and all of that. 
uh, complacency, so a false sense of security, right? Just because we implemented cryptography, TLS, even though it was 10 years ago, you know, cryptography is supposed to be secure and forever. And no, that's not true. Um, things change and protocols change and you have to make changes, right? And then I would say that one risk, if we go back to this, is also because these guys have a lot of outdated standards, they also don't have the capability to do analytics or intelligence and see what percentage of clients would require SHA-1 or what percentage of clients don't support the latest cipher. They don't know. They don't have no way of calculating that, right? Um, so that is another reason to uh, maintain up-to-date standards. Also seen this in the financial sector quite a bit that because there are definitely compatibility challenges when you upgrade to new versions and anybody that's serving you know, a consumer population or maybe have a lot of customers, they're very afraid to make any changes. So, but again, I mean, you have people with CISO in their title, they should do better, right? No? So I'm gonna talk about a little bit of something that Cloudflare does in our implementation and how we approach this challenge. And then also I will provide some information of how people can do some of this themselves. So as we looked at this SHA-2 migration, we had a big problem ourselves because going back to what I mentioned before that we had the large number of certificates that we had issued for the universal SSL. Uh, those certificates were expiring, I believe in October of this year. So we had to refresh those certificates, uh, renew them, and look at how to migrate. We looked at um, percentages of clients that only supported SHA-1, and we found that there was an, a global average of about 1.4%. Uh, Brazil is a little bit above that, 1.6%. And um, there are some countries like China, for example, that had more, more significant numbers, like 5%. So what this means, basically, that as you migrate to SHA-2 SHA and the newer encryption, that um, a certain amount of internet users are not going to be able to connect to websites. And that's going to happen here, right? So we, we looked at a solution that was able to provide the most up-to-date security, the best standards, but that also had backwards compatibility. Um, we looked at, we studied globally, you know, the traffic we receive and the different clients. And basically, we found that older version of Android 2.2 and old versions of Windows XP and older versions of OpenSSL basically um, don't support SHA-2. Some of these systems you can upgrade. Uh, it would kind of be as simple as maybe in the Windows XP case, just uh, installing Service Pack 3 or using a different browser. But we believe that there are going to be some of these systems that are going to be very difficult to, uh, to update, um, you know, embedded systems, some you know tablets that are used for um, point of sale or display systems, uh, even bank ATMs actually, a lot of those run very old operating systems. So we believe it was important to actually address the backward compatibility. And what uh, we have done is we are looking forward and we are supporting the latest certificates, which are SHA-2 with elliptical curve, which are more efficient certificates and use smaller key sizes. My colleague here, Olafur, is going to talk a little bit more about that, about the elliptical curves. And also have the capability to do fallback to SHA-1. So when we provision a customer, we will provision these three certificates. You can, in reality, just do it with two, this type of technology, which is called certificate switching. You could do a SHA-2 RSA and SHA-1 RSA. 
but we went a step further. So basically, when a new connection comes in, we have a decision tree that basically first examines if TLS 1.2 is supported. If not, we will uh, go to a sh we will present a SHA-1 certificate. If it is, then we examine uh, more to find out if EC ECDSA is supported, and we will use that certificate. Or if not, you use SHA-2 RSA. Our implementation, we call it lazy loading, which means that we wait uh, the most that we can before actually presenting a certificate when the connections are established. That's where the lazy comes from. Other uh, companies use the term certificate switching. So you'll, you'll see references to that if, if you do some more research on this. Uh, who else is doing this? So Facebook and Alibaba both uh, are doing this. Alibaba is a large e-commerce company from China. Uh, they have a lot of traffic in China, and that's one of the places where there was still a higher percentage of clients that did not support the newer standards. And Facebook also, I would say, because they serve uh, you know, a global audience and they, they don't want to necessarily um, remove encryption from places in, in emerging markets where, where it's needed. And, they, and they've, they've also written a blog post about this recently. Um, so beyond telling you guys what we're doing, I figure that also since this isn't really a, a sales presentation, uh, I would also give some education if somebody wants to do this on their own. Can, can you do this, right? So, um, so you could use something like HA proxy, for example, to implement this technology of uh, certificate switching. And going back to what we were talking about, a, a bank or some other enterprise customer that for their valid reasons that they maybe they have these old equipment or they have old operating systems, maybe they don't want to update that, but they could do something like this. They could implement an intermediate proxy, which uh, you could implement using uh, HA proxy. Nginx also supports some of the certificate switching. Facebook has open sourced uh, their capability to do certificate switching. And um, Cloudflare will as well in the future of what we have done. Some further reading, some references. Uh, I talked about that. I mean, probably one of the ones that you may not know is this CA browser forum. So that's where a lot of these discussions are, are going on in the technical community. Obrigado. <risos> Perguntas para o Felipe. Como ele disse, ele entende português, então ninguém precisa ter é, vergonha aí, pode fazer a pergunta em português e ele vai responder em inglês. Mas... Well, I also cheated a little bit because we knew that we had the English translators for Olafur's talk and for the CGI event that you guys are having later, so... Uh, I was a little bit lazier and didn't didn't study all the cryptography terms in Portuguese. <laughs> Mais um comentário do que um, uh, uma questão de que você <coughs> mencionou de que esperaria que os sites de banking, né, o próprio site transacional do banco, tivesse um índice de segurança tipicamente melhor uh -huh. do que o da própria capa. E o que eu queria te contar é que a minha experiência é contrária. Em geral, é pior. Uhum. Assim, o que é mais preocupante. Porque Sim. naquele site transacional que envolve aí informações, informações confidenciais, etc. Mas provavelmente está ligado a uma coisa que você mesmo falou. Tem mais risco. Exatamente. Risco, receio de compatibilidade, ou seja, um sistema mais crítico. E aí eles ficam mais resistentes a a fazer atualizações, e isso acaba atrasando eles mais. Ou seja, assim, me parece que faz sentido. Assim, eu só não gosto nada disso. Eu acho assim a qualidade desse tipo de coisa nos grandes bancos nacionais realmente é muito ruim. Sim. Mas assim a minha experiência foi dessa, de que normalmente o site transacional 
tem uma qualidade de TLS ainda pior do que o da própria homepage, que muitas vezes é até o da, o da CDN que eles usam e não do próprio banco. Sim, e esse site que eu mostrei é um dos bancos mais grandes do Brasil. É, sim, e eu, <risos> eu sou cliente desse banco, infelizmente. Então... É, só acrescentar um comentário, Felipe. Você pode falar alguma coisa sobre o roadmap de vocês para a HTTP2? Sim, é, nós lançamos a HTTP2 a semana passada e já está disponível. A necessidade de fazer essas é, mudanças de criptografia era uma base necessária para é, lançar HTTP2. E similar estratégia que nós tivemos backward compatibility, também com HTTP2, nós é, a base de Cloudflare, do stack de Cloudflare, está muito baseada em Nginx. E Nginx é, implementou HTTP2, mas eles retiraram Speedy 3.1. Então, quando nós fizemos um, um estudo, vimos que se nós simplesmente mudávamos para HTTP2, íamos a ter uma redução de performance, porque tem muitos clientes que suportam Speedy 3.1, mas ainda não suportam a HTTP2. Então, nós tivemos que escrever essa mesma funcionalidade de ter backwards compatibility, de ter HTTP2 e eh, Speedy eh, simultânea. Então, Cloudflare tem isso implementado, tem lançado, está disponível para, para todo mundo. Nós, nós anunciamos isso na semana passada e eh, também há, há, um, há um bom artigo no blog de, de Cloudflare que vocês podem ver sobre HTTP2. Remoto. A gente tem uma pergunta online, uh, onde o participante pergunta por que não a gente usar já CHA3, porque está sugerindo usar CHA2. Sim, CHA3 bem também, já foi eh, padronizado recentemente, mas ainda tem mais com problemas de compatibilidade com, com CHA3. Então, se nós, nós estamos avalando, temos um equipe de, de pessoas que, que miram os novos estándares, eh, é, mais à frente da HTTP2, também há é, é, um protocolo Quick, que também temos pessoas que estão é, avaliando e fazendo testes nessas desde, desde agora. Bom, mais ninguém? Vamos dar uma salva de palmas para o Felipe. Muito obrigado. Obrigado. <risos>